What's up Bertini fam? Now in today's video, let me go ahead and show you what we're gonna be changing out on my 2020 Mini Cooper JCW. Do me a big favor, if you have not yet joined the Bertini fam, go ahead, click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my weekly content that I put out. And if you haven't been following along in my Mini Cooper Build Series video, go ahead and check out my Mini Cooper Build Series playlist. I have all of the videos organized there so you can catch up on where we're at in my Mini Cooper Build Series. Now let me go ahead and show you what we're gonna be changing out today on my Mini Cooper JCW. All right, now when I bought my 2020 Mini Cooper JCW, there were several things that I didn't really care about on this vehicle and I wanted to change almost immediately. I really didn't like it. I almost didn't like it so much that I didn't purchase this model specifically because of these things. Now the first thing was these seats. Now as you can see and you could probably see from my uh, Mini Cooper build series videos or if you've been following along for some time, I've changed out my Mini Cooper seat belts and my JCW to red ones. So these things look really nice. They really do change up the interior. Um, the other thing that I really didn't like was these seats. Now, um, Mini Cooper JCW, some of them come with like these really cool like sport seats. But then I realized that um, I'm in love with a set of, well, I can't tell you yet, but there's a set of seats that I'm really, really in love with that are aftermarket seats that I'm gonna be switching out these two front seats to. And so that's why I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and keep it with this interior. It's okay for now because I'm gonna be changing out these seats anyways. Now, the other thing I wanted in my Mini Cooper is I wanted it to come with this shifter. I'm not a big fan of the older model shifters. I specifically wanted this one. It reminds me of like the Toyota Super shifters um, and typical BMW shifters. And that's why I wanted this one. The next thing was the steering wheel, which as you can see here, I've replaced mine with a really nice uh, flat bottom carbon fiber steering wheel. Um, and then also to the paddle shifters, which I got these ones on here from MMR Performance. They're titanium paddle shifters, really, really nice ones. But funny enough, the biggest thing and why I almost did not buy this Mini Cooper was because of this gauge cluster. Now I know, or actually I should say for some of those who are across the pond, the clocks on these Mini Coopers. Now this cluster, I really do not like. I know it's a preference thing. Some people love these things. Some people do not like these things like me, but I'm really on the like, I really, really do not like this cluster. So since I bought it, I've always had a plan to switch out this cluster for a digital one, which let me go ahead and show you what we got here. Now I picked up from outmotoring.com this really, really nice, um, digital cluster, if you will, and I'll go ahead and uh, take this off here so you can see what it looks like. Um, but this thing is really, really nice. I've been in love with this thing since the first time I saw it. Um, it is a really, really good looking piece. Um, I picked this up, like I said, from outmotoring.com. If you use code Bertini, you can save some money. That's how I actually purchased this. I use code Bertini and that's how I got it. Um, the other thing that you're gonna need if you're gonna be doing this upgrade is one of these fiber cables. And like I said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll include a link. By the way, this is wrapped um, with some like uh, plastic piece, I guess, just to cover the wiring. Um, but this piece plugs, this piece right here, plugs right into the back of this cluster right there in the middle, in the middle port, this port. Um, and that gives you the ability to be able to utilize this cluster on your F56 model Mini Cooper. Now, before I get into the details of everything, I'll go ahead and include links to everything in the description box below, every part that I've used today, um, as well as any sort of resource link that I think will be beneficial to you. I'll go ahead and include that in the description box below. And like I said, um, in previous videos, or if you're new to my channel, I'll always include my discount codes um, for these websites where you can use my discount code and save yourself a bunch of money on these products. Now with all that out the way, go ahead and roll the intro. Something really important to note, by the way, um, aside from just installing this on your Mini Cooper, so aside from just changing out your current clock or cluster um, to this new digital one, um, there is some coding that is required. But before we do that, we do need to get this thing installed on my Mini Cooper. So let's go ahead and take the old cluster or clock out and replace it with the new digital one. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's go. All right, before you can remove this cluster out of here, there's two screws. There's one right here, and the other one is right over here. Uh, what you're gonna need for that is a T20 Torx bit. 
Um, just remove those out. Be really careful so they don't fall down here. Um, if they do fall down, they pretty much just fall to the floor. Or you can use some sort of magnet um, to pick them up out of here. But we'll need to remove this out of here. So simply take those two out and then this will pop right off. All right, now moving on to the next thing, you will have to remove um, this black outer ring from here. Now, in order to do that, there's two button, not button screws, but kind of like button plugs, if you will, um, that are down here. Use a trim removal tool just to pop them out. A plastic one, of course, so you don't uh, mar up any piece here. And then simply go around the edges of this and pop off this black ring. Now that our ring is off, what we'll have to do is we'll have to come here, pop out this vent once again using a trim removal tool. Just simply pry up slightly using a plastic trim removal tool. That'll allow uh, this piece to pop off. And then right up here, there's a small hole that you want to put a flathead screwdriver in uh, and just slightly depress, which is going to allow this piece right here, this whole console piece, to move forward a little bit. Um, and then the other thing we need to do here is we need to use our Torx bit to remove one screw here and one screw here. And then we can go ahead and remove this from the, the center piece. Now that my head unit here is uh, pretty much popped off completely, um, what I'm going to do now is go and grab um, the fiber optics cable uh, that we're gonna need, which is gonna plug right in, uh, let me see if I can show you here, but right in uh, to this piece right here. And what we'll do is we'll then feed it um, down through here behind the AC and right up uh, through the front of here. So I'll show you what that all looks like once I'm done um, and where everything is plugged in. This way you know where you need to plug it in in order for it to work. All right, so let me show you how I wired um, my fiber optic cable. So I ran it right down through here. So basically what I did was, is I ran it through the top on here, right above the main, the main cable right here. So I ran it through the top. Um, just through the back here. It literally took me probably no more than 10 seconds to do this. Um, ran it down this way, ran it under most of these wires, and then plugged it in right over here. So that is the port that it's going in. It only goes in one way, so don't force it. You'll see the dimensions of the plastic itself, so it can literally only fit in one way. Now, something very important, because this is where I see a lot of people on the forums make mistakes. What you want to do from this point is you want to take one of these tools, right? So like a plastic tool and push down a little bit on this thing until you hear the clicking sound. If you do not hear that snap into place, chances are you did not get either get a good cable or you got a cable um, that doesn't have a locking device or you didn't see the cable properly. And if you don't, you're going to get all sorts of error messages when you go to actually code in your um, your dash, it's not going, or your cluster, it's not going to be coded um, or it won't code properly. So make sure that you hear that clicking sound snaps into place, you get a good cable um, so that you don't run into that issue. I don't want obviously all of this slack over here. I want the slack to be on this side. So I'll just go ahead and pull all of this slack through on this side. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and button everything back up here, just the same way you took it off is the same way you put it back on. And then we'll go ahead and install our new digital cluster. All right, so everything's buttoned back up now. Um, over here, all the pieces are back together. Um, now what I have to do is go get the new digital cluster um, and get this put back onto here, get these two pieces plugged in, and then we should be good to go and start coding. I still can't believe this is finally the moment where I'm getting this digital cluster. I've had my mini now for, uh, I wanna say a few months, um, probably like three months now. Um, and this is a piece that I've been uh, really like eyeing, 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 um, and now outmotoring.com actually has them for sale. Uh, and so I'm like, yeah, definitely gotta scoop one up, use my discount code um, and get one of these things on ASAP. Look at this thing, it's just so nice. It's just so pretty. All right, now in terms of the cable that we just installed onto here, that once again, will go into this piece right here so let me see if I can get it where the lighting is good. It's gonna go into this piece right here. And then the other cable, the other one that was already on here is gonna go into that last hole right there. By the way, for those of you who wanna see what it looks like with the light looking into it, that's what it looks like. Um, I do plan on buying a screen protector um, for this thing because I hear that uh, 
If not, they can get a bit scratched up if you're not careful with them and don't clean properly. Um, but yeah, it, it looks good though. It's a really nice piece. Now, before I show you all this, this thing came out so, so nice. This is a, I mean, I feel like, especially on the Mini Cooper, you know, when like cockpit means a lot, right? I mean, in my opinion, in every vehicle, the cockpit means a lot anyways, but especially on this Mini Cooper, this like completely changes your whole like front area. It's nice. So let me go ahead and show you what this thing looks like. Look at from my positioning how nice this thing looks. It's just so clean now. It really, really cleans it up, um, especially with my carbon fiber steering wheel. I mean, this is just the cockpit now with the, the titanium shifters, the paddle shifters. It just looks so, so nice. Now, let me show you something here because this thing does need to be coated. Like I said, if you do not have a heads up uh, display unit here, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the auxiliary mode or um, I forgot what it's called. All the stuff that it lights up. Oh, that's so nice. Oh my gosh, it's so damn nice. Now, beforehand, I know I didn't show this, but beforehand, my system had no lights whatsoever on. I am gonna go ahead and turn on my mini so you can see what all lights will stick on the unit um, when I do this. Now, some of you might be wondering, can you drive it like this? Can you turn it on and see if it actually works? Let's go ahead and try it out and see. Hopefully nothing breaks. So you can, it does turn on. Um, it's letting me know that, I guess that's like a seatbelt thing. It keeps saying convertible roof, check latching. Um, that's not true. And then also too, Right now my Mini is actually filled up with gas um, and it's showing me it looks like on empty. So we do need to code this thing in. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that and I'll give you a few different options. Let's go ahead and head on into my office so I can show you what all options we have available to us to programming this new cluster. By the way, to program this thing, you are gonna need one of these kind of uh, cables. Like I said, I'll include links to everything in the description box below where you can pick all this stuff up from. So you're going to need this and you are going to need a computer. Okay, now there's going to be two files that you need to download. The first file that you're going to need to download is the PSDZ data light. This is the first file that you're going to have to download. Um, and I will be including links in the description box below. So go ahead and download um, this file first. And the second file that you're gonna to need to download is the ESYS setup. This is also known as the ESYS software. Once you've downloaded both of these items, go ahead and go to your downloads folder and hit copy on the PSDZ data because we're gonna to need to paste that into your data folder next. Then go ahead and head on over to your C drive and then you're gonna to wanna to go to the tab or the folder called data and open up the data folder. And then for the PSDZ data that's currently there, go ahead and delete that. And you're going to wanna to then paste in the new one that you just copied. Now we're good to go ahead and load up our ESYS software. Um, this is the program that is gonna allow us or the software that's gonna allow us to make modif modifications to our code on our Mini Cooper. And once the ESYS loads up, go ahead and click the OK message here. And now what we're gonna have to do um, is once we uh, go ahead and load up in here is we need to make a connection between the software and our Mini. Uh, in order to do that, of course, you should have your ethernet uh, cable already plugged into the computer and into your OBD2 port. And then we need to go ahead and look for our mini model. Now, uh, I'm on a Mini Cooper F F56 model. And so I'm going to go to the latest one here. The latest one here being the date 03 uh, 22. This is a more recent one. What you do not want to select, by the way, is you do not want to select any that say direct you always wanna select the one that does not have direct in there and the most recent one. The other thing that you need to look at here is the IP or the TCP, excuse me. These two need to match for the um, in order for this to work. If these two do not match, go ahead and change the connection via gateway URL to match the one that is the connection via VIN. Um, not URL, but the, you know, the, the IP looking thing, the TCP looking thing, and then just click okay. And then now our, we're actually connected, um, to the mini Cooper. So we need to click into expert mode here. 
And then from expert mode, we need to click into coding. And this will allow us to now code our Mini Cooper. But before we start coding, we do need to hit the read button. And that'll allow the system to read our current, um, our current ECU, if you will. Um, before we can make edits to this, we do need to save or else we're not going to be able to make edits. So call this whatever you want to call it and click the save button. And then now go over to edit. This way we can actually make edits um, to our code. So once you click the edit button, what we need to do is that FA tree, we need to expand um, this down. Once again, this is where everything that we need to change um, is at. So you'll wanna expand this and then you'll wanna expand that and then you're gonna to wanna to expand type. And then here, I can't pronounce that word, but you're gonna to wanna to change that number to 0320. It's currently 0320 because I've already coded this um, already. So it's changed, but you're gonna to wanna to change it from whatever yours is and change it to um, 0320 because that's the proper date that, that you need. The other thing you need to change is in Solapa element you need to add 6WB. For me, it came right after the 6UM is where I placed it. There's no spaces, just right after the comma, hit uh, type in 6, capital W, capital B. Um, and it's basically in like an, uh, the order in which, um, I think it's chronologically or numerically or whatever it's called. And then you click uh, apply changes. That's gonna allow whatever we just did here to apply uh, what we did. So make sure you click apply changes. Now from here, click FA, and then what we need to do is calculate the FP. So FP um, to be calculated, so you'll wanna go ahead and click calculate FP, and then go up and hit the save icon. Um, this way we can go ahead and save what we um, just did. Then click the back button one time, and for coding module, you're actually going to click yes. The reason I click no is because I don't need to code anything. It's already been coded, but you'll click yes. Then load, it'll load back in and you want to click FA again and hit activate FA. And then it'll reload this whole thing right over here. And you'll want to go to read ECU. It's very important. So from here, you're now going to look for the combi. Now, I will explain here shortly what happens if you don't find the combi, um, but from here you're going to locate where the combi is at, and then you are going to left click on combi, okay? Very important. From uh, left clicking on the combi, you're gonna want to then detect CAF for SWE. It'll go ahead and load up here, and then what we're looking for is if you look to the right where SV, SVT target is, that ice step target, the F0562035064, we are looking for that exact same thing right here in this list. In my case scenario, it was the last version or the last one. Um, and so it might be the same on yours, it might not be the same, but after you do that, you'll go ahead and uh, click the OK button. And then now that we have done that, uh, what you'll want to do is go back down here um, to the list that you see below in the SVT, excuse me, um, and you're going to look for combi again. There it is. And then once you find combi, click the CAFD that you have now um, coded back in and you're going to want to hit code. Now, once again, mine has already been coded, so I'm not gonna click code, but once you click code, then you could go ahead and exit out of the ESYS software and you're good to go. But I'm gonna explain what happens if you do not see Combi here because that's what happened for me originally um, and I had to reach out to a few people as well as um, someone here locally to help me figure out how to find um, combi if it's not here, what I need to do in order to get combi in this section. So if you couldn't find combi in your section now too, where you're gonna need to go to is right up here to where it says entry nav. 
as you can see there. So you would have to hit read ECU, right? And go to the entry nav and then do detect calf and go through that previous step that I was showing you about matching the, the I step uh, target in. And then once you do that, you could go ahead and click code and then code will then uh, code in whatever that calf is. And from there, it will then give you access. Once you exit out of the ESYS software and you reboot it and you go to the top and load in all this work that we did here. Um, oh, I should mention you should save it before you exit out of the system. But um, once you reload back into the system, so you hit read and you go through the whole process from the very beginning where you click read, you add the 0320, you do the 6WB, it should all be there then you're going to be good to go um, and you'll find combi and then you could repeat all the steps that i showed you so that's how you can get combi to appear if combi does not appear on your screen when you go ahead to to try to do this there's one last thing that i'm going to do here and you need to have an fdl uh, coder you could use the esys software if you want to um, i'm using bimmer code here because bimmer code it's just much easier for me um, to go through and edit the FDL um, or edit FDL because of how simplistic Bimmer code is. Um, and this is an app that you can get in your app store. Now we are going to want to go, um, in this case scenario, click into head unit and let it load up here. Then once we're in head unit, you want to click expert mode, agree to the terms, and then go to search. And you're going to look up combi underscore C I C. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for combi C I C. And you're going to want to make sure that this is set to high. It might be on low. It might be on mid on yours, but you're going to want to make sure that it's set to combi high. Very important. Now, the next thing you're looking for is extender or X tender moss and make sure that this is set to active okay um, that's very important those are the two things that you're going to need to um, code in using bimmer code uh, from here you just literally hit the code button in bimmer code um, which was on that previous screen code will allow this to code into your mini once you've done this you are all set you're good to go and your mini cooper or mini is now coded if you're interested, I use an OBD link CX here. So OBD link CX, and I do have the Bimmer code uh, full version. I highly recommend this app. This app is great for um, modifying any of your code, but of course, anything you code, do it at your own risk. I'm not advising you do any of this coding. Everything you do, it's completely at your own risk and responsibility. I'm not liable, nor is outmotoring.com. All right, well, now that everything is done being coded, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like when I came into the Mini. And I'll go ahead and start it up here so you can take a look at what it looks like. So this is, uh, it's on sport mode right now because my vehicle always starts up in sport mode. Um, but as you see here, I have the John Cooper Works logo because my Mini is a John Cooper Works. Um, and I could go ahead and switch through any of the uh, three settings that I have here. And yes, it will change on um, the display so really really nice um, my overall impressions of this thing is this thing looks so good look at this oh that looks so cool <laughs> this thing is really really nice this is definitely worth the upgrade especially because of the fact um, that when you look over here at this angle it really does change the overall appearance and the cockpit um, of the Mini Cooper which is something that I'd highly recommend doing especially if you're considering on taking your interior up a notch this thing really does add that next level of customization and niceness. Of course, for those of you all who got yours equipped with this, I'm sure you could vouch for this thing, but this is a really, really nice setup. Highly recommend picking up one. It's worth every single penny. On that note, if you're interested in picking one of these up, once again, you could pick this up at outmotoring.com. That's where I picked mine up from. And if you're interested in saving some money, use code Bertini. That's the same code that I use to save some money on this item. So code Bertini. Well, don't type in code, of course. Uh, that won't give you the discount. You have to put in on the discount code. You have to put in Bertini. 
I'll go ahead and put links to everything in the description box below this so you can save some money on these things. Highly recommend picking one of these up, outmotoring.com. Now, if you're new to the channel and you're just watching this video for the first time, go ahead and check out my Mini Cooper build series. Um, I have a whole playlist on it. I have a whole playlist on all of my other build series content. So go ahead and check out those playlists so you can get up to speed on all the stuff that I've done to my Mini Cooper or any of my builds that I have um, or I've had. You can go ahead and check those out. I have dedicated playlists to everything, so it's super organized for you all. Oh, and don't forget, if you have not yet joined the Bertini fam, go ahead, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This way you can stay up to date on all the content that I put out. I put out weekly videos, so you want to stay tuned in for that. And like I said before, it's completely free to do so. Most importantly, above all other things, make sure you're putting out good energy into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now.